Hey guys, this is a plug-in remote control made by General Electric. They were really cheap. I think it was $20 for three of these and one remote. So this is channel one, channel two, and channel three. One of the reasons I think it was so cheap is because it doesn't have an on-off button. It just has one button which turns it on or off dependent on the state of the outlet. So if I press the on button, the light comes on. If I press the button again, it turns off. So you can't really turn something on in another room and know that it's on. It could have just turned it off because you're not certain of what the state was of the outlet. So that's a bit of a problem. Um, another reason why it was really cheap is these things actually draw current from the coin cell battery. It's not much, but it's enough for your battery to get killed in like four days. So it's pretty bad. Um, you'd have to replace the battery and that's just a big issue. So what I'm going to do is modify this so it doesn't drain the battery. All right, I opened up one of the remote controls so I could access the battery holder. Therefore, I can measure the amount of current being drawn while it's in the standby state. Well, you're not pressing a button, in other words. So, I have it right there. I have my power supply set at 3 volts DC. And I have my oscilloscope set up so I can see the signal. Just for fun. And here's the DMM measuring the standby current. And it's measuring... 3 milliamps, which, as I said, isn't that much, but from a battery, that's going to draw it down pretty quickly. So if I press the button to turn the light off, it draws 9 milliamps. So, yeah, that's, you know, what you would think would happen. But when I don't press the button, it should drop down to zero, or very, very little current should be drawn when it's in standby. So I'm going to add another button so that the battery is only connected when I press that button and then after pressing that button I can press another button. So it's going to be a simple modification. Alright, there are two places where I can cut the trace so I can uh, remove the battery voltage from the circuit. I can either cut it here, which is the negative side of the battery, or I can cut it on the positive side of the battery right here. And since I'm going to be mounting the button on this side of the enclosure, I'm going to go ahead and cut the negative trace. Uh, probably just use some exacto uh, knife of some form. Okay, that should have been enough to cut through the copper. Now I'm going to take out that little section in the middle right there just so I have more uh, insulation. So nothing can fall in there and bridge the gap. Well, I couldn't find my other uh, razor blades, so I'm just going to use a flat-headed screwdriver to remove the copper. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to use the razor blade. Okay, the visual inspection looks all right, but I'm going to go ahead and ohm it out just to ensure that there isn't another trace buried in the board. I seriously doubt this is more than a two-layer board, but who knows? Better safe than sorry, right? So let's just measure it there to there. And as you can see, it's in overload. And just to make sure the meter's working. Oh, haha. <laughs> Good thing I checked. I had it on current. All right. Yep. And let's just make sure the probes are working. Yep, okay. That looks good to me. Now, let's go ahead and add a button for the battery control. All right, this is the button I'm gonna use to disconnect or connect the battery. And I think I got this off of an old DVD player for the front panel display control. Um, yeah, I don't know how much current this thing can handle. I couldn't find a model number. I'm guessing it's not too high, but it looks like the maximum current drawn for the RF function of the uh, remote control is 10 milliamps. I'm hoping it can withstand that. I don't see why it can't. It's not really that much current, and I'm not going to be cycling this multiple times a day, probably. Well, maybe twice a day. So, 
Even if it burns out, I have several more I can use to replace it. Not that concerned. And this is more just a fun project than an actual uh, massive solution. All right, this is the back of the enclosure. This is the battery, so I can't really put the button anywhere near there. And let's just get that circuit here side by side so we can see what that'll look like. So here's the circuit next to where the battery would be. And the circuit will be flipped over like so. And the place I'm going to want to put the button then is here, therefore here. So I'm just going to drill a hole for the button and uh, probably use hot glue to hold it in place and solder some wires onto it and then uh, solder the wires onto the board. Should be pretty easy. And at the moment I can't find my calipers so I'm just going to use this uh, Bosch bit set to uh, sort of estimate which is best. And the nice thing about this set is it has holes that indicate the bit size. So you can take the object that you want to figure out the uh, hole size necessary and see if it fits into any of them. It does fit into this one but it's got a little too much wiggle room so I'm going to use the one uh, bit a little smaller, one step down, so that I can uh, have a snug fit. I'll probably have to use a razor blade to make the hole a little bigger but overall it should be quite quite a snug fit once I uh, take out a little more plastic. So I'll use this bit here which is uh, 7 30 seconds. Okay, that looks like a nice hole. As I said, I couldn't find my razor blade so I'm just going to go ahead and widen the hole using the bit. I don't really like doing it that way, it's pretty messy and not very precise, but it does the job when you don't have anything else you can use. That came out looking quite nice actually. This is on the outside, so what I'll be pressing, and this is it on the inside. So I'll just uh, hot glue that down after I solder the wires onto it. Okay, I'm using solid copper wire taken from a phone cable for this, just because that's what I had lying around uh, at the moment. It's a little thicker than I want it to be, but it'll work. Also, stranded would have been great. Oh, that's terrible soldering. I'll fix them both up once I get them both in. Oh, where did my black wire go? Okay. That's better. All right, that was a hold. Now I can get the hot glue and put it down. Well, it's just not my day. I can't find the hot glue gun, so I'm gonna use crazy glue instead, and it should hold it down quite nicely. I do wanna be careful with the super glue because if it gets inside the switch, super glue acts as a insulator, and it will prevent the switch from doing its function or just locking it in place so that it won't even move. So, while it's drying, I'm going to turn it upside down just so the uh, super glue will go towards the uh, PCB as opposed to into the switch, hopefully. And we'll see what happens. And while the super glue is drying, I'm going to go ahead and expose some copper so I can solder one of the wires to the new ground. Alright, I tried using a razor blade to remove the uh, silk screen, but that didn't work out so well, so I'm going to try using acetone on a Q-tip to see if that'll eat through the silk screen. Yeah, the acetone's not working. I'm going to try xylene, see if that does anything. Huh, xylene doesn't seem to really do anything quickly either. That didn't seem to work. I'm going to use my Dremel instead using this pink tip. I'm not sure what this material is. I know it's softer than steel. Hopefully it's harder than the silk screen.
Yep, that's working quite well. Excellent. Have to remember that for future reference. Now I can clean this up just using the Q-tip. Looks quite nice. I forgot to press record while I was soldering, so I already did the soldering. Uh, I put one of the wires on this side where I cleared off the silk screen, and I put the other one on this side because if I put it here, that would have caused some issues with inserting the coin cell because that's where the coin cell slides into the holder. All right, so that's all set, ready to go. Let's uh, put it back together and give it a test. It seems the super glue didn't adhere very well to the printed circuit board, so it came free while I was soldering. Uh, for the time being, I'm just going to leave it as is. The wires seem somewhat secure, so it should hopefully hold the switch in place well enough for it to operate for a quick test. I put uh, electrical tape here, so it won't short out to the uh, circuitry of the green board. Alright, let's just put this back in and see what we have. All right, the remote's back together. It's pretty easy to operate with one hand. Just press the button on the back and then press the button on the front that you want to activate. So that turns on the light, that turns it off. These ones aren't being used for anything right now, but I'll just show you a quick demo using one of the uh, spare ones that I have here. So here it is in operation. You can see both my hands, so I'm clearly not cheating here. Turns the light on, turns the light off. So there we go. Now the batteries won't go dead and still have full functionality. Thanks for watching guys. Um, yeah. The reason I couldn't find anything is because I just cleaned my lab and you know what happens when you clean your lab. You lose all your stuff, right? <laughs> so anyway, take care.